And to kick us off, help me welcome the former Senior Vice President of Engineering at Nutanix, and now currently he is the co-founder and president of DevRev. Please help us welcome Manoj Agarwal. Knock it out. Thank you, Jeff. Really appreciate it. Uh, you're funny, man. CRM, what did you say? The couple relationship management? I also need one. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, it means a lot. I mean, for all of you to come here and spend time with us. And many of you, I know that uh, we extended the invitation. We couldn't really get you here because of the seat limitations, something that suddenly we are going to work on on the next year. Uh, I'm just going to talk about the, the product. In, in fact, even the, the idea of DevRev, and we are going to do a lots of demos uh, in here. He spoke about the Halloween. I can tell you one thing. Everything that we're going to talk about here is real, nothing creepy. It's in the product. It's in product production. You can go and try it out for yourself. And, uh, and that's what we are going to go and do it here. The idea of DevRev, like if you close your eyes and you start to think about the company itself, what does company mean? And uh, very soon in this mess or web that when you start to look at it, there are two things that emerge. It's the concept of like the product and its customer. Those are the only two things matters for the company. I mean, in the absence of either, you don't really have a company. And then you have people inside the company. What do they do? They work. They work for what? They work for product, and they work for customers. That's what they do. Such a simple idea. And when I think about the work itself, uh, and if I start to apply the first principle thinking, what you see there is work starts and work ends. It is that simple. Work starts and work ends. And then you have number of stages maybe that you have to do during the work from start to finish. So for example, I'm in the software development. I'm doing the work. I'm going from open state. I'm just talking about Jira at last year. I'm sure that many of you know how the work is done there. It's in the open state going to the in development to in QA to in deployment to resolve, and finally you go and close it. Maybe some workflows that are running at every stages. If I'm doing uh, customer support, I'm just calling this work something else. I'm going to go and put it in a different system, but it's work. I'm just calling it customer support tickets. It's just work. It also opens. It goes to, let's say, when the tickets is filed, Somebody in the support engineering department picks it up, and they're working on it. If the product requires product escalations, go to the product escalation, comes back, eventually you mark it resolved, and you are waiting for the customer to say yes or no, and then you go and close it. It still work. If I'm doing in the sales, and just turns out, the sales also, they do work. Only thing is that we call them different thing. We call them opportunity. Now, opportunity is also, it opens, gets into the pipeline, go to the upside, you go to the strong upside, you get to the commit, and finally you mark it closed. Closed as one, hopefully, sometime also lost. That's the simple idea of the work. Now, it's just such a simple idea. If you start to connect it to the product and customers always, then you have a beautiful system that emerge out of it, which is, I can go product down. I can look at all the work that I'm doing in the organization. Doesn't matter which department that I come from. I can come to the customer side. I can look at all the work that I'm doing for the customer. Not just that, I can also link between the product and customers, which is just, I know this part of the product, how much capital or how much revenue or which all customers that are coming and using this product. I can come to the customers and can see all of the product, what they are using, what are they consuming, what API they are consuming, how many users are there, and so on. Such a beautiful concept. Product, customers, work, they come together. Now, there, are lo there is lots of data that we are talking about in, the, in this. We are just not talking about just this simple thing. You have to obviously go and connect it, this entire thing. We are talking about 
documentation. Now, documentation also is easier to say than just the documentation. There is PRD, there is design document, there is this entire UX, UI that you're talking about for the related to that document. There is uh, knowledge base, there is FAQ, there is like tons of things that we do in the context of building the product or serving our customers. All of that data, how do you really bring it together in a system that allows you to then answer those questions to run your business? To do the intelligent capital allocations decisions that you have to make almost every day. And it's the core concept of DevRev that I would like to bring in forward, forward to you through a demo, what we call it the knowledge graph with all this data that we bring it together tied to the product. And to talk about that, I would like to invite here the other M of the MNM, the head of product, Michael Machado, and the dude, some of you might know, the Steve Poitras, the, the author of uh, Newtonic's Bible, and we're going to talk about more stuff there onto the stage. Come on, guys. Awesome intro. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Manoj. Uh, I geek out about knowledge graphs. I think they're beautiful. I think they're fun to visualize. I think they're fun to explore, right, to try to find and discover new information. But the hard part is knowledge graphs are three-dimensional, right? And exploring a knowledge graph can sometimes be a bit difficult. So what Steve's going to show us right now is us actually flattening that knowledge graph to a two-dimensional space that we call trails. Perfect. Why don't you fire up DriveRap for us? All right, let's check it out. So this is our Trails user interface, and Michael referred to this as a nice UI on top of a knowledge graph. I refer to our knowledge graph as a badass knowledge graph, because it is badass. And so what we'll do here is let's go ahead and extend our product, its capabilities, and see the features here. Now, when we think about the way that different teams or cohorts of the business think about product, everyone thinks about things in a different light. And one of the things that we've done here is we've unified the view that all aspects of the business think about when they structure their products. So here, I can see that I have my product, my capabilities, and features. As a developer, I don't work on features necessarily that the human sees. I work on microservices that facilitate those. So I have these microservices here. We also have things like our enhancements. So these are roadmap items that are either currently in place or in progress. Also, things like our top contributors. And that's one of the things, is by building this knowledge graph, we can not just correlate and relate across product components. We can do that with people, with interactions, with events. And it's a very, very powerful thing. If I view here, I can actually see my top customers that are interfacing and using this support app capability. Now, that's good and all, but let's go ahead and check out this support app capability. So here what we can see, traditionally, I would have a support tool as a support engineer. As an engineer, I would have an engineering work management platform. For support, I would also have KB storage. And then documentation would be spread across a plethora of different platforms. I faced this. I dealt with this. We would have docs on Slack, Google Drive, Google Docs, Notion, all over the place. And there was no central source of knowledge to actually consolidate that information. And if you look at this view here, what we can see is not just the product linkage, we can see all of our customer tickets. So these are all the interactions, all of the requests related to this distinct node in the knowledge graph. We can also view all of our engineering efforts, so all of our issues that developers are currently working on. We can view all of our knowledge base articles. So all that knowledge that we accumulate over time, we have one single central place that we can actually go for that. And Last but not least is the docs. A lot of times documentation, whether it's PRDs, design docs, UI UX workflows, it's all over the place. And if you look at this view, we've consolidated and converged that all into one single related model. That's awesome, Steve. You've essentially traversed the hierarchy of our product, from capabilities to features, showed us an entire graph that we're able to uh, explore. But I'm a PM. And you know, I, I, I'm kind of looking over at that sprint board, and I want to get into it. I want to go see what we're prioritizing next. Can you, uh, can you jump into that and show what the build app itself can actually show with support sprints? Yeah, definitely. Let's check it out. And one quick note is this is actually our real environment. But the good thing about being a private company is we don't have to worry about forward expectations. So we can uh, go ahead and show this here. 
So one of the key things to highlight here, obviously this is all the work that the engineers are working on, is the insights piece. You know, a lot of times knowledge is okay, but if it's not actionable, it's very non-powerful. And so it has to be actionable. And if we look at this view here, we can see a few things. We can see all of the actual product enhancements or improvements which are coming, as well as who initiated that request, how much is coming from our customer, how much is coming internally. We can also do that same thing with tech debt or maintenance, which is typically overlooked. And here we can see we actually have a pretty good comparison between our enhancements as well as tech debt. Yeah, I like that. We've got a, a good balance here. You know, product management, getting a lot of visibility from the customer. They're, they're challenging us on the support app, making us push new features and functionality out. And your tech debt here, nice, like, oh, it's 10 to 1 ratio. You yeah. Know, doing a lot of jobs there. Yeah, we, we take tech debt seriously. So, cool. Now, one of the nice things, so Michael, you know, obviously we see backlog here. As a PM, how do you typically prioritize backlog? Do you pray? Do you meditate? Do you throw darts? What do you typically do? I got a dart. I throw it against the wall. I see what sticks. Uh, but you know, when, I, <laughs> when I'm in a meeting and I'm working with my teammates, I actually try to bring the voice of the customer to the table, right? And yeah. PMs have that advantage to not be writing code on a day-to-day -day basis. And so a lot of it is how do we learn from our customers and how do we bring that insight but you know, it's anecdotal insights a lot of times. It's I've talked to a customer, I've seen a customer, I've talked to a sales team. How does Debra bring that to our, uh, to our sprint backlog? Yeah, no, absolutely. Because we have everything built into that knowledge graph, we have the ability to actually sort backlog by real customer impact. So this is not just about you know, tickets or requests for certain features or enhancements which are coming. We can also see who's interacting or interfacing with different product components. So let's go ahead and sort this by customer impact. Now if we zoom in on this view here, I can actually see every single customer which will be impacted by this issue. And this is something that could be weighted, it could be prioritized based upon not just pipeline opportunities or tickets or requests, but also things like severity. So a very, very powerful thing, and as a tech lead or developer, typically we would rely on PM to actually do this prioritization for us. However, from a power point of view, it gives us a lot more power and ability to prioritize autonomously. It's amazing stuff. And, you know, we got to uh, put some reality to what Manoj was talking about, the product. How do we center our team around the product? How does the work, how does the documentation, how do all the conversations get brought to the product, get anchored into the North Star of our customer? But I've seen this before. I've seen, no, you know, a ton of expectations that you're going to go rip and replace every application, that you're going to expect... Uh, you know, like uh, the signs I see on 101, one app to rule them all. There's a new company every day telling me they're going to replace everything. How does Debra make this easy for me? Because I can't expect four departments to change their tools in one week. Yeah, no, absolutely. So if we kind of go back to what Dirigen and Aditi showed earlier today, they kicked off an airdrop, right? We understand not every deployment is going to be greenfield. There's going to be a ton of brownfield deployments where we either have to integrate and migrate from existing systems or live simultaneously with them. And so here we can see that our ongoing imports is zero, but we have a past import here. And if we go ahead and click on that, we can see that this was run one hour ago. This is already complete. So let's go ahead and check it out. So here we can see, just in the time of the keynote previously, we've integrated right around 15, 14, 15,000 objects and migrated them from a system, done the mapping, the transformation, all into the DevRev platform. And the nice thing with this is it's not just one way. We can also enable bi-directional synchronization across these systems. So when it comes to getting started, it's very simple. Awesome. Thank you very much, Steve. Cool. Thank you. So what you just saw, like uh, it took, what, 14 minutes? That's what I saw, the statistics. Yep, 14 You said minutes. like, what, 15,000 or so that uh, we looked at it. If you go back, one more slide back. So we are talking about this airdrop feature that we have. In the last six, seven months of that, our engagement with the customers, we have airdropped 20 million records into DevRev. That's not a small number. And by the way, this didn't require a single dollar on the professional services. We have invested heavily, heavily from day one in Slovenia office, where we had been building, before we started building the product, we started to work on this airdrop feature, because we knew that it is going to be hard 
to really bring the records that you have and map it onto DevRev. And of those 20 million records, a lot of them are coming from your favorite, like the tools that we use today. So Jira at last, you see almost 40% of the records are coming from that. 35% of the records came from Salesforce. Salesforce Service Cloud, even Salesforce Sales Cloud, the, the, the objects that we are syncing. And then, all, of course, Zendesk is another one. But there are many others that this happening, this uh, published in our uh, marketplace. So we are going to talk about the, the next stuff here. And I just want to bring back the same, the things that we were talking about, the concept of the company, the knowledge graph, and so on. But one of the things that we all know very well, that we still have departments inside the company. We are talking about, I have, the, I have to build products. So I do have software and product development engineering, like that department. I do have customer support department. I do have sales and marketing department. All of that is still exists. I'm talking about the concept of product and customers is still. But how do they collaborate in this system? Because I can still be in the silos. I can still can just work there. But if I can't collaborate with the other teams, other department, then it is all useless. So, here is the concept like what I'm just bringing it out here and we are going to show it with live demo here. So with the dev, with DevRev systems, how do we really bring the collaboration to the surface wherein the lines start to blur while you still have objects that you have to deal with it? The people and persona that you interact with can you still allow to do that, but then you can still do a lot of work a lot more seamlessly. And that this idea of bringing the going and talking to the customers on one end and building the product on the other end. How do you really do that? So every time I think about the customers, I think about we interact with the customers from the company side. How do you really collaborate with the customers on one side? And there are so many different channels we are talking about. And only few that I'm listing here, a chatbot, Slack connect channel that uh, I have customer portal, I have emails, messages that I'm sitting in the a conference that I'm talking to them, how do I really bring all that information, the voice of the customers inside the organization? So I'm just putting it in here as like, okay, I'm doing conversation with the customers in all these various channels. Now those conversations, you might just go and resolve it right there. You responded to the customers in some way or the other. It's not everything that you can. So you go and create tickets. That's what the customer support, customer success team do. So let's say I'm going to bring that in the form of the tickets inside the system. Now, the life doesn't stop there. Because many of these tickets, you might be able to even go and give the, right away the, let's say the symptom that you might resolve it with the customers. But the root cause goes all the way back to the software development and product engineering and so on. So how do you really have this voice of the customer somehow get into the product planning, product roadmap to resolution all the way, but in the end that also you are interacting with the machine on the other side, which is where you have GitHub, you have like CI CD systems, you have monitoring, your observability and so on. You have all these systems that you are interacting with. So the idea of collaboration, collaboration with the customers, Collaboration with the people inside the company, different persona, different department, and collaboration with the machine. How do you bring that inside? Now, when we are talking about external collaboration, obviously there are different tools and systems that we spoke about, the channels. When we are talking about collaboration inside the company, we are talking about what? Voice, video, chat, social, notification, all of that is extremely important. And when you are talking to the machine, and that machine, which this is where all the bots are running, how do you really bring all of that all the way back to finally to the customers is an art. I mean, this is what that we are building here at DevRev. And to talk about that, again, my friend, Steve Poitras, somehow like I don't know why people call him the dude, and we'll maybe ask that question also. So Steve, <laughs> what, what do you have? Yeah, no, abs absolutely. So when we think about how we engage with customers, you know, how do we do this typically? A lot of times it's very outward in. 
Obviously, we have email campaigns and those sorts of things. But you know, when I think about engaging customers, it's not just about outbound in. It's about in to out. So how can we actually engage them? And so here, I'm actually on our events page. And I've configured a nudge, which is part of the DevRev platform. So let's go ahead and click on this nudge, because I'm in the role of a customer. I want to view the live stream. Obviously, a ton of good stuff being talked about here today. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right. So. It looks like this live stream is full for me, but uh, let's go ahead and go back to the page because I can't connect to the live stream. So going back here, let's go ahead and send DevRev a message. Now, I what? Saw something about the glue there. What was no. that? Well, uh, let, let's see if it can answer that question for us. We'll see what it says. Looks like the system is still thinking, and uh, <laughs> it doesn't know who the DUD is, maybe. So Poitras, you have to try really hard. <laughs> so, so the whole idea of uh, the machine, if they know the answer, can they really answer? If they don't know it, can it really bring the human? and have them answer the questions. And uh, one thing that I have always realized, no matter how many times that you rehearse, still it may go wrong. It still works. <laughs> but looks like it finally it works. Yeah. yeah. But, and and this, this is really one of the things when we think about the power of artificial intelligence as well as these LLMs and models. You know, it can consume data from all gamuts of information. Right? And so here, I don't know where it got this information. I'm not that big on bullying. Um, but I have matured, so to say. Um, but this is one of the things where it is very powerful. If we think about traditional deflection, it is all rule-driven or event-driven. With LLMs and GPT, we can actually consolidate that knowledge and then use that to answer questions that we may have never imagined. So a very powerful thing. Now, I think this was useful, but I also still want to connect to the live stream as a user. So let's go ahead and say, no, that was not helpful. And let's go ahead and connect with someone. And my wife doesn't refer to me as the dude either. So <laughs> she just calls me by my middle name. So, so as this is loading, obviously, there's a little latency on the connection here. Um, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to initialize a conversation just like your customers would with your platform. And one of the nice things with this plug platform is it can be deployed within your website, within your app, basically bringing that interface or that conduit to where your customers actually are, which is a very, very powerful thing. So here I'm going to say connect with the team. And I'm going to say I can't connect to the live stream. So this is basically the experience that your customers have. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pivot to the interface that me as a support engineer would actually see. So here, if I go ahead and click here, I don't know why I'm named Jennifer Robinson, but uh, it is what it is. Um, here I can have the full history, right? So By the I can way, see. what you're just seeing right now, on one side, the customer is interacting. And now we're looking at from inside the company, how they respond. So all of that data is coming in here. Yep. Perfect. Now, one of the other key things here is I can also view all of the customer information just through this view. So let me zoom out a little bit so we can see this. So here we can see that this account that this user is linked to has 360,000 contacts, which are part of it. And that's one of the key things is when we designed the platform, when we architected it, it wasn't for singular, very small scale. We built this to be massively scaled. And that's a key thing here. You can see that just this one account has 360,000 contact objects. Very, very powerful. Now, as a support engineer, I think I can't fix a live stream, so I'm going to go ahead and create a ticket. So let's go ahead and create a new ticket here. And then let's say, can't. So we are seeing now the conversation. And because you couldn't really resolve it all, now I'm going and creating a ticket in the system. It's just an idea, but you get the, the point that I can go and log now, which has, like, say, a lot more stages. I can't really resolve it right away. Yeah. And so one of the things that pops up there is you can see that there are actually 
two related issues. And this is one of the nice things, is because we built in this AI, this similarity, and we have this knowledge graph, we can actually see things that are co-located or very similar. And so here I'm gonna go ahead and say I wanna link this issue to this ticket. And so here we can see that I've actually linked it, and I'm gonna go ahead and create this ticket here. Okay, now one of the key things as a support engineer, you know, there may be times where I need to pull in an engineer or figure out what's going on. And that's one of the nice things is if I go here, I can go ahead and start a huddle. So do you think we should try it live or? Yeah, so what we are right. trying to do now, or just trying to show you is how do you collaborate inside the company? Now collaboration can happen, as I said, inside with the, I'm just chatting with the people. Uh, or looks like what you're doing, what are you doing? Uh, well, you just started a video? So we're, we're trying to live, so we'll see. Hey, what's up, Safit? Hello. <laughs> Guess what? You're on the big screen now, man. You're on the big screen. So the idea of voice and video, maybe 10 years ago, that was a like, very, very expensive idea. Not anymore. So where you're doing the work, the entire collaboration, voice, video, chat, social, in the context of the work, that you can do it right there. And then at the end of it, also you'll start to show the, um, that transcription, summarization, action item, all that gets built in right there. So you don't have to do, take the notes separately and bring it into the, the system. So yep. that's what uh, you're showing right now. Yep. Hey, Safid, uh, can you help me with that issue? <laughs> yeah, let me check it out. Oh, here's the audio. You got to All right, well, all right. Thank, thank, thanks for deflecting to me. All right, see you, buddy. So Safed is dialing in from the Austin office. Great to see you, Safed. Okay. All right. So actually, that is true. It looks like I do actually own this issue. Um, I thought I merged this before the event. It looks like apparently I did not. Um, now, one key thing to highlight here is if I look at this, I can see my conversation is new. I can see this ticket is awaiting development. And this is because we know the dependent issues that this ticket is dependent on. And if we look at the issue, it says it's prioritized. All right, so let's go over to my GitHub. All right, so it looks like I thought I created the pull request, but I actually did not create this pull request. So let's go ahead and create this pull request. Okay, I even had notes to merge it before the event, which I obviously did not abide by. But so if I go back here, I can see because I've created that PR, the status of that issue is automatically updated to in review. Now, if I go back to my ticket, I can see that that status is now in development. Now, me as a user, I didn't have to update any of this. And that's really one of the core things of the platform is how could we offload a lot of this, you know, I call it grunt work, to an intelligent system that can make my life easier. And that's a very powerful thing. Now, I'm gonna kind of abuse my admin privileges here and merge this pull request without a review. I don't recommend doing this. We don't do this in production. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. And then here, we can see, I'm gonna mark this as completed now. And if I go here to internal discussions, you can see it actually has a full history um, and everything is actually updated there. So a very, very powerful thing when it comes to making people's lives much easier, right? That's one of the key things. And if I go back over here, I can actually see that when the ticket was linked, it actually notified the customer. When the ticket started, it automatically notified the customer. And that's one of the things, is not to say that I'm lazy, but I do forget about doing these status updates. So if I can offload that to the system, absolutely. Yeah. So like what we just saw, a customer conversation starting, the record getting updated internally, the software developer, developer who had to go and do the work, they're just doing the work where they are supposed to do, not even coming back into the system. The system updates all the way back to the customers. And it can be hyper-personalized because now we know the information about the customers and uh, the, in, the things that we are solving for them. This is the kind of power. Now, obviously, the power of LLM that also comes in here where it can be hyper-personalized. Now, you know English language in which that you want to also uh, go and uh, give out that information. That's something that you can do. Not just for in the chatbot. It can be done for every channel that we are talking about where you are interacting with the customers. So thank you. Uh, Steve, I see something there, the book of Deborah. What is that? Well, let's go ahead and check it out. 
So one of the things that we learned very rapidly at Nutanix was, you know, the more that we can kind of open up the kimono or share knowledge or insight about things, the more powerful things become, the more enabled people are. And that's one of the key things that we tried to parlay that and keep that going. So here at the event, we actually have a printed copy of the book of DevRev uh, with a foreword, which I misspelled the actual foreword piece uh, from Deerage. But, uh, you know, it's a very powerful thing. And I think the goal of this site, as well as the printed book, is to not just have it be written by me or written by DevRevelers. We want this to be community driven because all of you have so much amazing insight. I would love for you to help author posts or get engaged here because the more that we can learn from each other, the more powerful all of us are. That's awesome. The author of the Nutanix Bible and now the author of the book on DevRev. Uh, you can get it signed. Maybe later on you don't get time to sign by Mr. Poitras. Thank you so much uh, for this. Hope that at least it made sense and how we are doing the collaboration with the customers, how we are doing the collaboration within the company, between the different departments, how machine collaborates with the human, and all the way back to the human, I'm, I mean on the other side, the user that we are seeing. And uh, I actually want to change the track a little bit. I want to bring in somebody uh, onto the stage next, somebody uh, who actually believed in what we were doing from the very early on, made the decision, some, some of the questions that I'm also going to ask him when he comes here. I would like to invite the chief customer officer of uh, Unifor, a dear friend, Vinod Muthukrishnan, onto the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Vinod, like I know prior to Unifor, you have founded your own company. You had been at large, large organizations also through that, and now at Unifor. Just t tell us a little bit about yourself itself, your own journey. I actually started my career in the Merchant Navy, and the first time I got streaming internet was only in 2007. So <laughs> I was cut off from the digital world till then. I did two startups, um, the second of which got acquired by Cisco. Um, um, and now obviously after Cisco, I wanted to do something cutting edge either do my own startup or join a startup I believed in. That's a startup I believe in, and hopefully we'll take the company public. But essentially for me, the one lesson that's carried through is a group of really mission-driven, motivated people can accomplish anything. I learned that in the Merchant Navy, and I see you folks, and I see exactly that. So very happy to be here. Thank you. Like, uh, I remember just going to Unifor's office, we know they invited us, and it was one meeting. So what made you, like, I mean, trust right away the dev, DevRev? So my dream is by the time or before we have a billion bipedal robots, companies can actually work as one. That's like the base stuff. Because every company I've been in, large, small, it's not a function of size, really, beyond, beyond four people in a room. Essentially, we forget that our sole purpose to exist is to serve a customer. And the best support interaction you can ever have is one you never needed to have. And I'm the chief customer officer. It's not a permanent title for me. But for me, the, the idea of support is to make itself redundant. And that does not happen if you look at support as a symptom. There's a support ticket. It comes in. You try to close it. And closing is success. Closing is not success. Going all the way back into the engine room and understanding what's causing that issue, preventing the recurrence of that, and look, running a diagnostic to make sure that our products never behave in the way that created that ticket. That is at the heart of great product engineering, right? So for me, the fact that support and product and design and engineering live in different worlds is the root problem of what we have. But I'll tell you why it took only one meeting. You design beautiful products. I'm a sucker for just beautiful products. Any product that the founder of the company and come in, open their laptop, every question you ask is answered in a demo for me, is a winning product. And that's really what I saw day one. Thank you. Uh, now, when we look at Unifor, obviously, I'm just uh, at a very, very high level, just bringing up some of the tools and systems that are used here. And uh, when we were talking to you, we started talking to you about the, the whole concept of solving for customer issues and can't be done just in the customer support. It has to go all the way back 
to the development team and doing it together. So bringing in DevRev and the very first experience, let's say, what I'm just showing you here yep. is uh, the airdrop that what you saw, the two-way sync. The very first thing that we did was with the Gendesk, we did the two-way sync to bring all these records into DevRev. But that alone is not important. That was just getting the data in. But you also wanted to go and connect with on the software development side with the Jira, let's say, so that I can also have that interaction that's going on. But also you need the customer record and opportunity and a lot of other information from the Salesforce also into the platform to really make it more meaningful. So just maybe talk about some of those things. So we integrated a lot and we also pushed your roadmap a bit, which I'm very proud of. <laughs> um, so we actually essentially started, there's a three phase for us. First is what I call the plumbing, which is all the systems and data that I needed to bring together. So that was Confluence, Jira, Zendesk was a migration. Um, then we had, uh, um, we had all our monet services, all our alerting services, instead of pushing into Slack channels, emails, this and that, come into DevRev. Uh, so we essentially wanted all our systems to feed in here. We pushed you on Gainsight and Rocket Lane, all of that data. So customer health, engineering team, support ticketing, all of that data to come in and reside in one place. We wanted all the alerts and monitoring to come in there. We wanted a knowledge base to feed. Your LLMs obviously working on top of that. That was the base level of plumbing. But the activation on top of that was we obviously wanted each issue should not yield a meeting, which is you have a meeting, you call the PM, you call the engineer, then the support person's there, and then there's a little, every issue is a triage conversation, right? So to prevent that, we obviously wanted um, Jira very strongly so that engineers can exist in Jira, support team can exist in DevRev, but then I had a feature request, which is I don't want my teams to work off of three disparate knowledge graphs, right? And the request really was, honestly, all of these folks are trying to do only one thing. Make my customer happy, prevent that ticket from ever happening again, which means I would really want them to work off of the same interface, same GUI, that is powered by the same knowledge graph. And that's my only single-threaded, very simple feature request for you. Yeah, so one of the things that you do talk about from system of record to yeah. system of action, action. Yeah. and uh, and the other thing that I've heard you also say is uh, when the cost of the tools yeah. becomes higher than the, like the maintenance and professional services, that simply means that you have to stop and rethink. So maybe it's both the things that how do you want to, uh, what do you think about those? No, I genuinely think, look, we've plumbed in so many SAF products together that we have so many, so many products and data sits here and every organization you go into the first thing is we are doing Snowflake. Why are you doing it? I want to bring all my data in one place. Why are you doing that? Then I need to clean it up. Then it needs to make sense. Then I'll be able to do some analytics. And I've almost never in my life seen a project that succeeded, which you know, starts there. And for me, the problem there is that you've got all these systems of record that essentially are storing, cataloging data. And if your job is to just store, your job is not to make it actionable and activate it. It may say it on the website. It doesn't happen. And for me, the greatest value in a product is not for it to be a system of record that tells me that there's a flat file, you can actually have data in there. It's that it is a system of record, which is, it doesn't matter if I know, I think uh, Scott said, this is your shoe size, this is your preference, this is your favorite color. To use all of that to drive engagement at an N equal to one personalization, that's a system of action, right? Knowing your shoe size or your gender or your favorite color is literally useless, right? But to bring all of them together and make it actionable, for me, it's actionable in the sense my support engineer is not saying this part of the site is slow or this service is not running. It's to actually collaborate with the PM and the engineer to say, hey, this seems to be a foundational problem in this version of the product, in this module. What can we do to make sure this never happens again? That's a system of action, right? That's number one. The second thing I told you, you asked why in one meeting we, we bought DevRev. Look, I came in, I won't name products. It's, it's not a name and shame thing. There was one product we had where the PS cost at the point of me running my math had exceeded the ARR of the product. So I asked my team, if you went out with Unifor and you told the customer, hey, it's gonna cost you a million dollars a year, and the PS is gonna cost you $1.2 million a year, tell me how many units of Unifor will you sell? And the answer unanimously was zero. That like nobody's ever gonna buy it. So my question was, why are you buying software in a way you know that nobody else will ever buy software? Why are you at the tail end of this? So for me, the airdrop, I think, was the first thing we did, almost literally the first thing we did. Products need to yield themselves to end user use. 
We spoke about the great democratization of AI. Why would there be a billion developers? Not because the billion folks are going to learn Java. It's because they're going to interface with that core capability in a very different way. It won't be a walled garden which says, if you've done X years of engineering, you can write code or create stuff. Similarly here, you should be able to do some of these things without needing to go into the builds of it. So that's really what my thought was. Products should be usable by end users. If the person who's deriving value, benefit, and lives in the product every day, cannot click, configure, amend, edit, dive deep, all of the things you showed in a product, for me, it's not a product I want to use. Yeah, that's beautifully said. So, so what's next? We are doing the two-way sync right now with the Jira. We're also doing two-way sync right now with the Salesforce. So uh, I heard that your top sales rep at DevRev uh, walked and talked in downtown Las Gatas with my CTO for three hours. So Manoj was seen as discovered by somebody in the audience, walking, talking, and heavy selling uh, a Jira replacement to our CTO. And at the end of which, I think he told you yes, and he said, can I invest in the company? So <laughs> I know you don't need money. But so really, there are two, three tactical things and one overarching thing which I alluded to. The tactical things are, there are many small things that reside elsewhere. I want the documentation portal, incident management, all of that to come inside of DevRef, right? Uh, I also want to make sure um, that we are able to let people operate. I want my engineering team entirely on DevRef. I want my product team on DevRev, I want my support team on DevRev, which means, to your point, it's a lead or a ticket or a threat, doesn't matter. There's a single source of truth, there's one knowledge graph powering that, and they're all operating in the same environment. I know it's, a, it's an audacious goal, yeah. but I think everybody in our org is aligned uh, towards making that happen. Uh, also, small things like timekeeping and this and that that reside elsewhere, right. I would just love to bring it in here, because, again, the point is not bidirectional things. Bidirectional things solve for availability of information but not insight and analytics and action. Only when the same knowledge graph powers the GUI can you now say, hey, what do I do with all of this information? So love bidirectional syncs, but almost every product that we have a bidirectional sync with, I assume you will help us do those functions in your GUI at some point in time. Absolutely, and this is exactly what we are going to go and do there. Thank you so much, Vinod. Like, Thank you. Such a pleasure. I will do. Thank you. And hopefully, also in due course, maybe another whatever number, amount of time, I'm not going to guess, hopefully that we get rid of that also. And that will be like really, really powerful. So what you're seeing here, there are three apps that are emerging or three departments that are emerging already in here, taking care of the customers like post sales, but there is pre-sales activities that happens from the, the growing the revenue, but post sales also, customer success, uh, that we are talking about growing the revenue also. And during all these processes that uh, how you bring the voice of the customers all the way to product planning, product execution, road mapping, and the hyper-personalized information that is going out uh, to your customers, prospects, and everybody else there. So there are three things that I just want to talk about here very quickly, and I'm going to invite my friend after that, is there is support CRM, and CRM concept that you kind of understand now, which is like the customer relationship management, but in the context of, again, uh, customer support. But there is also customer uh, CRM that everybody knows in the context of the sales and growing the company. And there's a third one that we are just introducing, which is product CRM. Now, the idea of the product CRM is how do you, in the process of building, as well as then notifying, uh, hyper-personalizing it to the customers. So product customer relationship management also becomes very key. Now, these three things, three CRMs coming into as one is what we call one CRM. So to talk about more about the one CRM distinct, um, like the feature set or capabilities, I'm going to invite back Michael Machado. So before I get into the actual applications themselves, I want to take a minute just to talk about the platform because three years ago, it was our birthday or a birthday tomorrow, we started it on the platform. We started to try to create this converged object model. How can we converge your work across different silo departments? How can we converge your customer and your user and all the engagements you're having with those customers? And then finally, how do we think about your product? How do we think about the system or record of your product, between your product, your capabilities, your features, and everybody that works a product does? 
And we do a great job of that. We make that customizable. We could actually power automations off of that. And that's where our workflow engine came into place. And our data warehousing effort actually made sure that you could have SQL-based analytics on top of this and visualizations powered by anyone in the enterprise. And all of this had to be wrapped in a trusted, a secure platform so that we could go to market fast across small businesses all the way to large enterprises. But we weren't done. We hold ourselves to the highest standard of design. And design to us isn't just a shiny UI. I think we have some beautiful UI. But it comes down to the APIs, the webhooks, the SDKs that we build so you can extend our platform. And we made a marketplace of extensions. We call them snap-ins, where you can bring any of your integrations into our, app, our application interface and actually extend our UI itself. And all of this done at the design layer is done with natural language. So we can drive collaboration across all of your teams and drive collaboration with your end user because that's the most important thing. That is your North Star. That's your customer. But DevRev was DevRev.ai before uh, VCs required it for you to raise a large round. So uh, AI has been at the, you know, the canvas. It's been at the heart of our entire platform. Um, but it's not the sexy all the stuff that always gets the attention. It's the data engineering that's really important, right? How do we go through and we index and we allow you to build your own vector database where it's actually indexing all of your information, not just your articles, but your website information. Every customer conversation that you have has to be indexed because we have to expose that to the knowledge graph. But we've done something even more. In the past year, we've actually worked on how do we actually allow you to bring your own LLMs, to customize the embeddings, to choose whatever open source LLM you want, but also take it even a step further and allow you to hook into APIs so you can actually have your developers developing their own LLMs because this market is moving so fast. We want to be a little bit like Switzerland, agnostic at the LLM layer, delivering out of the box value, but allowing you to bring your own LLMs throughout the entire platform and the experience. So that's the perfect way to introduce our first application that sits on top of the platform. And it was about one year ago today that we launched our support app and helped transform the way that L1, L2, L3 engineers started to work with their customers. And our customers were ecstatic because they said they needed something different. They needed a blank canvas to start to work on customer support from the ground up that was centered in the product, that allowed them to engage with their customers without bolting on yet another application. Because we need faster feedback loops. Our product, building SaaS, requires us to ship almost on a daily basis. So how do you enable product uh, engineers? How do you enable your support teams to talk about that product? And finally, we need to bring AI into the fold. And so that's what our goal was, is to you know, answer the questions to our customers why support needed a new tool, needed a blank canvas, and needed to think about how you know, we could start by unifying that communication, unify the way we collaborate with our customers, in-app, omni-channel, and across our teams so that we can work together to support our customers better. Next, we brought unique analytics. We call it the People360, and it actually allows you to understand your roles, your responsibilities, and how you're going to do resourcing, not just in support, but actually how you think about on-call and the different layers that come into supporting your customers. And we relate this back to the product. Because with that blank canvas, we can think about what it means to engage with your customers, and you're not just constantly throwing tickets over to the wall to Jira, but you're actually allowing everyone to focus on the customer and how to support them better. And the final piece here is AI. Right? We want to make everyone enabled on AI. One, to help you serve your customers better at scale, giving you search, deflection, all the things you need to be able to help your customers in real time. But at the same time, enabling your agents to actually have assisted support workflows. And they be part of the reinforcement feedback loop by guiding our AI. Because our AI needs to assist you. It needs to deflect for you. But most importantly, it needs to be constantly learning. Constantly learning about every piece of information that's being posted on Slack, posted in a channel, posted across your customers' blogs and information. So that's our goal with our support app. And that's what's uh, been a great success over the past year. But moving on, we introduced this concept of product CRM. It's something that DevRev actually started on. We've been dogfooding our own product since day one, and we were on the build product. And we launched it six months ago because a lot of our customers were saying, how do you use DevRev from a product and engineering perspective? And it was always part of our vision that product, engineering, customer support could live on one platform because we need a new platform, right? 
we've been kind of moving at this sort of project-based pace. But our CI, CD pipelines are going faster and faster, right? The way we get feedback from our customers is continuing to come faster and faster, and they expect us to respond at that same speed. You can't ask them to give you information on a per minute basis, but say, hey, I'll respond to that in six months when we get a, you know, our next roadmap planning session. And so that's what we had to retransform. We had to transform what it means to build you know, a project management app, a product management app, how to converge product uh, metrics with the way you actually plan and release your product. And so that's where our build app starts. It starts as building as one team, where customer information is constantly feeding your sprints, your roadmaps. Where the product 360 is giving you a true system or record for your product. It's amazing we've gone so far always living in the project world. How do we think about the product? Understanding every user metric that we care about. Understanding our roadmap, understanding our sprints and our KPIs. Because we have to think about Gen AI not as just another tool, it's a catalyst. It's a catalyst for every PM engineer to actually understand what the customers are telling us. To react in real time with tailored language, to push information to them that's personalized, and to actually launch products faster that get in the hands of our customers and we actually see adoption grow from there. But we were missing one thing, and I think it's one of the most important things, is you know, the why of DevRev was to transform your entire organization, to make sure everybody was centered around the product with the customer as this North Star that guided you across all of your functions. But we haven't transformed that front office just yet. And so that's why I'm excited to see that we are now launching our growth CRM. And the problem is, we needed this. We needed a blank canvas for how we actually think about growing our product. Because modern SaaS doesn't operate with just long sales cycles anymore. We blend SLG with PLG. We require success from customer success to implement our products and work with our customers, not just at the beginning, but throughout their life cycle. But sales tools today, they don't really care about the customer as soon as they get acquired. So it's no wonder when you actually think about accounts and contacts that we lose track of the most important thing, the user. We have to understand their workspaces and how workspaces blend across different orgs. And we actually have to transform how we think about our metrics. Things like LTV, customer acquisition cost, NRR, there's no system out there that gives it to us in a native way that blends all the teams together so we're left going and finding another customer success tool. So with our growth app, we're just launching it right now. This is the, the, the launch of our grow app. We have a couple amazing alpha customers, but this is the beta launch. It's going to create a culture of customer success, where the idea of serving your customers better doesn't mean growing another department. It makes everybody responsible for customer success, and it makes sure that you actually get the true customer 360. You get the ability to understand your customer journey from the moment they hit your website, do they turn into a lead, do they're a freemium user, do they elevate to you know, your champion, and hopefully never become a detractor because you're following them. And we wanna make sure that everybody uses this information as part of their workflows, whether you're launching a new feature, onboarding a new customer, you're given the playbooks, you're given the implementation plans, you're given everything you need in DevRev to sort of take them through these different templates that you need to track that in them through the entire life cycle and use natural language generation to engage with them at the right moment, at the right time, so you're not left kind of waiting for the next automation tool to come out. So that's our Grow app. That's our one CRM platform. And you know, we've gone over a lot in the past hour, and I appreciate everyone for hanging in there with me. You know, we started with data, right, and how that formulated our knowledge graph. We talked about collaboration and how when you get teams to collaborate together, you actually converge your workflows. And the machines are actually able to operate in a much more automated way. And then finally, we talked about the one CRM and the applications that they powered. And how all of this coming together makes it effortless. Thank you. But before you leave, I'm not done yet. You know? I've heard a couple different speakers already talk about you know, what does the future of AI you know, mean to us? And to me, it means that we won't have to let application be taught to us, that the application will learn from us, that natural language will be this new interface. 
But you know, Scott said something I also found interesting. He said, no AI is complete without a UI. Can't just be the idea that you're gonna be talking to an AI and it's gonna have everything you know, respond back to you perfectly. You need a way to engage with it. And that's what we are calling Spacebar. This is the first ever launch of Spacebar. It's our natural language interface into our application. And I'm excited to invite my uh, partner in crime here, Shruti, to demo Spacebar to you live. Thank you, Michael. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for waiting so long. Uh, and we promise this is the last part of the keynote. <laughs> uh, OK, so let's get started on what do you want to know? What, what do you want to ask Turing? So I'm in DevRev, and um, I'm a product manager. I get excited to, uh, to dig into the product all the time, but we're almost at the quarter end, you know? And I think uh, I can see some sales reps in the room. They're probably getting anxious. How do I close in these final two weeks? And how do I actually unify the entire company? Well, as a PM, I don't have a Salesforce license. And I don't really want to wait around till Friday to you know, get together as a group across all these departments and discuss you know, what can we move in our pipeline. Um, but I've got a feeling Spacebar is here to help me. So Spacebar is here at the bottom as you interact with it. And it's actually going to give me the ability to ask for my pipeline. OK, let's see what we can ask and what Spacebar is going to give us. There you go. You have some numbers. You have some weeks. You have your quarter. I love this. So I've got an idea of my opportunity. In the far left, we've essentially gone from natural language to a natural language generated table. right? And it's actually taking all the information across the knowledge graph and saying, hey, here's what Q3 is looking like for you. I've got this beautifully highlighted column. Now, as a PM, I'm going to put my trust in the sales team to handle the strong upside opportunities. But you know, upside, two weeks to go. We gotta you know, push those things to strong upside. So can we dig into the opportunities that reside in upside? Okay, sure. So let's see, we wanna break down on the Q3 2023 upside opportunities. Let's see. Beautifully written. And just like that. So you have a list of all the opportunities targeted for Q3, forecasted with the category of upside. You have all the companies, the account names, the ARR. Probably I can help you even sort it right here and see what ranks high up there. And looks like you have something that can bring you in 72 million. All right, Edge Innovations. I actually think I met with them early on in their life cycle. And I'm, I'm trying to think about some of their use cases. but. Honestly, I, uh, can we dig into a little bit more information about Edge Innovations? Of course. So you can click here, you can view the account. And if you see, this is everything that our knowledge graph puts together. You have the tickets, the engagements, the conversations. I, I, I'm in a hurry, Shruti. Can, we, can you summarize this for me somehow? OK, you want it simpler. Let's see. So I'm just going to go and say, summarize this account. I hope it will get you what you want. There you go. There are some details. Woo. So this is one of the first LM integration applications where you can actually interact with all of your data. It's contextually aware. It's personalized to me. It knows what I have MFC access to, so I'm not going to expose data to an employee that they're not allowed to see. But it also understands where I am in the application. And it interacts with me within this application. So truly, you got a great summary here. Anything that should jump out to me as a PM? Yes. So I see we already have five tickets from them, but I see there's one blocker. Maybe if you can work on this, you can help them convert. We can't just work on one, you know, because uh, the sales team wants it. You know, we got to think about all of our customers. So I saw you mentioned ticket 5372. Yes. Any other customers might be facing that same uh, just, feature request? Just, yeah, sure. Let's just, I have to reset my size. One second. You got some great Zoom skills. Yeah. <laughs> Just working on it. OK. I can't. Just give me a second. It's all right. Take your time. The dude. 
Let's give it up for Shruti, everybody. She's doing an amazing job here. <laughs> a command zero should actually reset it, but sure. We love to zoom in, keep your focused attention here. And also, Spacebar is beautiful. It's right at your eye level when you're working in, uh, on your desktop or on your computer. Uh, but it just so happens when you're on a stage, it's about right at my knee level, and I'm kind of blocking you half the time. So we're trying to zoom, keep you guys uh, able to see the full context of what Spacebar is able to do with you. There we go. Thank you, Nickel and Steve. <laughs> yeah, we are trying to zoom into Spacebar, so let's just... Let's go back. We had the account edge innovations that showed up in our, uh, okay, we are masking data for you. So let's just go back to, great. Awesome, we're back here. <laughs> So we had this, you wanted a summary of this, so we're going back, you're saying. We're getting our summary. Yep, it's generating it again. And now we'd love to understand a particular customer ticket and how this relates to all the other customer tickets that are being tracked right now. Yeah, so we're gonna see, show me tickets similar to uh, we want to see the one similar to the blocker, which is on enrichment. I'm yep. going to go ahead. And now our engine is actually pulling in. It's semantic search extracting this. This is awesome. So what How we many did, times do you want? I mean, please explain. What am I looking yeah, at? Yeah, so what we did right there is we saw that Edge Innovations was blocked on a ticket. We said, yes, we want to prioritize them, but we want to see what other tickets and what other customers do exist in our knowledge graph who are waiting on something similar. So I just did a semantic search on our entire knowledge graph for similar tickets, and this is the vista that we get up, and you can, I can make it easier for you. Do you want to go ahead and create an enhancement out of this? You're going to create an enhancement for me? All right, let's right see Right here. Got. So I think all of this looks similar. Right, and I think maybe even this one. So we got a pretty good result here. We go here, we create an enhancement right here, and it further simplifies by auto-generating and filling in the description by scraping all the data from all the tickets right here. You've gone pretty far here. You went from, you know, I was getting a little bored on a Tuesday trying to see if I could help the pipeline out to generating an enhancement, generating not just the enhancement, proposed solutions, understanding the problem, understanding the customer impact across our entire uh, customer base. But we're not done, right? We've got to figure out who to assign this to. Yes. So let me just complete it. I think we can say this falls under customer intelligence. I've given it a title. I've used the description. I'm going to go here and create this enhancement. And you want to help with knowing who can you assign this to, who can work on this. Yeah, we got right? two weeks to go. I don't think I got time to wait to the next sprint planning session. So I just created an enhancement there. I put it in the capability bucket called customer intelligence. Let me see if I can pull up who works on something similar right here. Awesome. So I'm going to just say who worked on and just search by text. It's going to show me the part right there, and I'm just going to say last month. There you go. Everybody who's been working on this capability, under which we just file an en enhancement, lead enrichment. That's I, the list of all the dev users. And I know Kunal. She's pretty amazing. I think there's a chance that we could actually get this done in two weeks if we assign it out. What else is they working on though. What, how can I make sure this isn't just one other item on the long list? Yes. So you know Kunal, but you also can know from this table that Kunal's been focusing 18% of his time on this, which is a good percentage, and he's contributed almost 38% of this of, of the entire work done under this capability. But you also want to know what his workload looks like. You don't have to drill down any further. You can just hover on your issues, and you can scroll right here as we see it dynamically pulling data right now. It looks like most of his issues are completed. I think I just saw like maybe one prioritized. I like it. But 
Yes. Looks like he can take this up. You know what? Let's assign it off to Kanal. Thank you very much. Awesome. So let's complete that. We have the enhancement right here. We go here and we just add Kunal's name. Awesome. So just like that. Yes. So to recap for everyone, we went from essentially an idea in my head. How could I help as a PM? Do more than just my day-to-day -day job of sprint planning, of thinking about the roadmap items, of meeting with customers, but actually say, I can help with this pipeline. I didn't have to wait around for a Salesforce you know, admin, a Salesforce license to create a report for me. I just made a command in Turing. Spacebar guided me through the entire process, helped me discover new insights, related those to across the entire organization, and now I've got an item here that's going to help close a deal in this quarter. So amazing job, Shruti. All in five sentences, five actions. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Wasn't that amazing? Let's give a round of applause one more time here. None of these would have been possible. Now we are talking about this lot of efforts that happens to get to this point uh, in our journey. I'm talking about here people behind the clock, that how much that work that they have done. 15 million lines of code to get to this point. 100,000 plus code merges. I'm talking about like right now we are at the velocity of more than 4,000 code merges that happens every month. Uh, more than 15,000 cloud deployments. You're talking about more than 300, 400 cloud deployments happening every month right now in the company. 350 plus repos. Now, anybody who has worked in the software development uh, side that you will be able to go and appreciate, more than 300 people right now around the world with 200 plus internship that people have done in this company. There is community outside, also out of uh, DevRev, that is also working to really ex expand the, the ecosystem, that we have a marketplace, we expose our API, webhooks, uh, UI kit, the workflow engine with which they are building the snap-ins and, and so on. Seven different offices worldwide and in four different continents. And with 4,000 plus customers who are the PLG customers, they also just come and sign up automatically and start using the platform. You cannot be thankful enough uh, giving you the thank uh, for huge gratitude. But I just wanted to point out to all the developers around the world, thank you so much for all the work that you do every day. There is a lot of effort that gets into it, and the idea is, how do you really get with all those efforts to make this effortless for you? Thank you so much. <laughs>